Good morning and welcome to our Sunday morning service. Because of COVID, we weren't able to hold the service this week in church, but I put together this short time together, a reflection around the Platinum Jubilee of Queen Elizabeth II. So let's pray together as we prepare our hearts to worship God. Almighty God, in this moment we come to you and we lay our lives before you. May we honour, worship and adore you with every fibre of our being. Father, we proclaim that you are the Holy One, the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Your beauty and majesty are beyond compare. And on this day we join with all those who worship and confess you as Lord. So come and dwell in each of our hearts. Equip us, challenge us, comfort us and teach us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our first song this morning reminds us of Jesus' call upon our lives and the need for us to willingly and decisively to turn and follow him. I have decided to follow Jesus. 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 No turning back, no turning back. The world behind cross before me the world behind me the cross before me the world behind me the cross before me no turning back no turning back though none go Our reading this morning is from Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, from verse 25, and it's the parable of the Good Samaritan. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? He answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbour as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. 
But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbour? In reply, Jesus said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So to a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he travelled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbour to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Father, as we take a moment now to reflect on these words, we pray for your help. Have mercy on us and grant us the gift of your Holy Spirit that we may hear your voice and respond to your words with all of our heart, soul, mind and strength. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Unfortunately, I'm currently down and out with uh, COVID. I'm not really feeling that good. Um, but I have no worrying symptoms. And it meant that I wasn't in church on Sunday, when we would have been acknowledging with thanksgiving Queen Elizabeth's 70-year reign and praying for her continued health and well-being. Now, I know that there are many shades of opinion that swirl around the institution of the monarchy. Some people see it as a little unnecessary. Some see it as a bit antiquated and perhaps out of touch. But many, many more people see it as something to celebrate. Whatever your opinion about the monarchy, there's no doubt that Queen Elizabeth has reigned over us with a great sense of dignity and grace. But what has impressed me is the strong Christian faith that has been evident throughout her whole life in her words and in her actions, as well as her formal role as the defender of faith and the supreme governor of the Church of England, something that she inherited, it just sort of came with the job. Her personal faith has always stood out. Her Christmas broadcasts to the Commonwealth are amongst some of the few speeches that she writes for herself and she very frequently in them refers to Jesus Christ. In her first Christmas broadcast way back in 1952 she said, Pray for me that God may give me wisdom and strength to carry out the solemn promises I shall be making and that I may faithfully serve him and you all the days of my life. A great place to start with God. Then in December 2000 she said, For me the teachings of Christ and my own personal accountability before God provide a framework in which I tried to lead my life. And then much more recently in 2020 when she was um, isolated in Windsor Castle, she said on our Christmas Eve broadcast, we continue to be inspired by the kindness of strangers and draw comfort that even on the darkest of nights there is hope in the new dawn. Jesus touched on this with the parable of the Good Samaritan. The man who is robbed and left the roadside 
is saved by someone who did not share his religion or culture. This wonderful story of kindness is still as relevant today. Good Samaritans have emerged across society showing care and respect for all, regardless of gender, race or background, reminding us that each one of us is special and equal in the eyes of God. Wonderful and true words for all her people to hear. In a world where people are often divided by race or culture or economics or political ideology or something else, the story of the Good Samaritan continues to speak to us all. The parable is given to us in response to a lawyer's questions. What must I do to inherit eternal life and who is my neighbour? Jesus shows the lawyer that he's asking the wrong questions. The questions aren't who is my neighbour or what is the right thing to believe. Instead, they should be have I been a good neighbour and how can I live out my beliefs. It's easy to read this story, isn't it, and look down on the lawyer who on the surface appears a little hard-hearted and filled with prejudices. But really this story should be a mirror in which we examine ourselves. Am I more like the lawyer or the Good Samaritan? Am I being a good neighbour? So how can we be a good neighbour? Well, first of all, keep your eyes open. The sad reality is that we probably walk by people in need every day. They mightn't be bloodied or beaten up like the man in the parable. But they are hurting and they need help. The problem often is that we just don't see them or perhaps don't want to see them. We need to keep our eyes open. Secondly, if we're going to be a good neighbour, then we shouldn't hesitate to help. When we see somebody in need, we often conjure up a reason why we shouldn't help. We imagine we wouldn't have the right words, or that somebody else is going to help them, or that we're not particularly qualified, or that we haven't got time, or perhaps some other excuse. When we see somebody in help, in need rather, we, we need to step in. And thirdly, Live generously, because if we're not very careful, we can so easily get caught up in living just for ourselves. And our lives become all about us, about our needs and about what we want. What a terrible story to tell the world with our lives. God created us to live a better story, a much better story, to actually make an impact on someone, on a community, on friends and neighbours and on the world to leave a lasting footprint. But we can only do that if we live generously. And so I leave you with some final words of Queen Elizabeth. She said, This is the time of year when we remember that God sent his only son to serve and not to be served. He restored love and service to the centre of our lives in the person of Jesus Christ. It is my prayer this Christmas day that his example and teaching will continue to bring people together to give the best of themselves in the service of others. The carol in the bleak midwinter ends by asking a question of all of us who know the Christmas story of how God gave himself to us in humble servants. What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. The carol then gives the answer. Yet what I can I give him? Give him my heart. Father God, Thank you for these words that speak into our lives, that speak with relevancy into our hearts. Help us now to accept them with joy and find glad 
and copious ways of displaying them in our lives every day in a way that brings glory and honour to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's take a moment or two to pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the example of Christ's humility, that he came not to be served, but to serve. That he, the King of the universe, would set aside his glory and wear our humanity. That he gave himself to the pain and the shame of the cross, and there his wounds have paid our ransom. Lord, help us to follow your example, to learn how to give without looking for reward, to learn how to seek your honour rather than our own, to learn how to desire your approval more than the approval of others, to learn how to point to Jesus and not towards ourselves. We pray for those who hold positions of authority, for those who govern over us in Parliament, for those who make laws and police our streets and administer justice, for those with the authority to hire and fire, for those who are authority figures in schools and colleges and organisations and churches. Lord, may all that they do be for the good of others, May they have wisdom to make right decisions. May they be fair-minded and through their actions may lives be enriched and encouraged. We pray for Elizabeth, our Queen, giving you thanks for her long years of service and dedication, for her faith and graciousness. We thank you that you have given Elizabeth, our Queen, a heart to serve her people and has kept her devoted in this service beyond all who were before her. Grant her continuing wisdom, strength and health, and encourage us by her example to serve one another and to seek the common good until you call us all into your eternal kingdom. And we take a few moments now to bring to God our own thoughts and prayers. Pray for those around us. We ask God that, would show, that God would show us how best we can serve him by serving others. And we pray for ourselves and for one another in the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And so to our second song this morning, will you come follow me? Question that Jesus asks of each of us. Will you come and follow me if I but call?
I'd call your name Will you quell the fear inside and never be the same? Will you use the faith you found to reshape the world around through The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us and those whom we know and love today and always. Amen.